Good evening and a very warm welcome it is to you. Thank you so much for joining us here on ZBC TV. Now, this is Economics 101, a platform where we get to discuss the topical as well as economic matters here in Zimbabwe. Now, October was a set aside in the Southern African Development Community, also known as SADC, calling for the unconditional lifting as well as the removal of illegal sanctions imposed on the Republic of Zimbabwe. Following that, uh, the SADC region, Africa, friendly countries, as well as the people of Zimbabwe as a whole, have marched, spoken, and stood up against these illegal uh, sanctions. Now, as a follow-up uh, to this very triumphant uh, month, we are now having a conversation in a studio, and uh, we are joined firstly by Mr. Trust Chiko Hora, who is the chairman of the Economic Committee in the Poland. Mr. Trust, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you and good evening, Zimbabwe. Absolutely. And uh, also to discuss more on this uh, particular month we are speaking of is Mr. Martin Jarare, who is the director of the Citizens Against Economic Sanctions. Mr. Martin, a pleasure to have you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and uh, good evening, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, yes, indeed. Yes. And um, uh, as to wind up the conversation once again, uh, we are going to be um, joined by the economist who goes by the name of Dr. Langton Mabanga. Doctor, thank you. Thank you very much, Kat, and uh, thank you, Zimbabwe. Good evening. Yes, yes, indeed. And uh, taking a look at uh, getting into the crux of uh, the issues we are to discuss today, in your view, I, perhaps I'll start with you, Doc, uh, what are the economic sanctions and how are they affecting the general populace of Zimbabwe? Uh, you know, economic sanctions, by their nature, uh, are designed to paralyze. Um, the economy um, and um, particularly the, the nature of the sanctions imposed on Zimbabwe were designed to paralyze the Zimbabwean industry, the entire industrial linkages um, ecosystem was, was, meant, was designed to be paralyzed. It were, they were also designed to paralyze the production linkages mm. of um, of, of Zimbabwe. Mm. They were also meant to paralyze the fiscal linkages mm. of, of the Zimbabwean economy. Mm. And if you take a composite of those mm. elements, mm. You, 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 you're literally talking about um, mm. an eclipse of an economy mm. uh, from the viewpoint of, uh, of the perpetrators. Mm. Um, you also know that these sanctions are, are illegal mm. in the sense that they were instigated mm. by by um, a, an exercise done by Zimbabwe, mm. an exercise of uh, natural rights mm. uh, on the polito, uh, polity Zimbabwe, yeah. of um, reacquiring mm. land. Mm. The, the exodus that was ignited by the Shoshé mm. people, mm. Uh, led by their chief, mm. and became a crusade mm. that, that, that elite the entire, mm. the Definitely entire speaking from the economist point of view, and um, you've given a very interesting insight with regards to perhaps the background that um, these economic sanctions have imposed. We'll come back on that, and also um, uh, we just want to perhaps hear from uh, Mr. Trustchikora, who is uh, the Polad um, chairman on uh, the Economic uh, Committee in particular. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Trust. And in your viewpoint, uh, perhaps from the Polad perspective, Mr. Trust, if you can share with us what the most affected sectors of the economy by the sanctions are and um, how does this affect the general populace? We do have uh, millions of viewers watching us and uh, they perhaps want to also know the impact of these sanctions on the everyday Zimbabwean. Yes, I, I should point out that um, as was alluded to mm. uh, earlier, after the land reform pro mm. program, mm. Uh, sanctions were imposed mm. on Zimbabwe. Sanctions were imposed by America, mm. uh, sanctions were imposed by the EU, mm. and uh, even Britain mm. imposed sanctions on, mm. on Zimbabwe. Mm. Uh, these sanctions mm. uh, mean that mm. Zimbabwe cannot get a mm. balance of payment support, mm. you see, uh, from our multilateral institutions mm. like the IMF. Mm. We mm. cannot get balance of payment support, mm. uh, we cannot get development uh, mm. support from mm. World Bank. Mm. 
uh, and it is also difficult mm. to even get support from other international financial institutions. Mm. Uh, and when we do get some uh, funding, it is mm. uh, at a premium mm. uh, because it is known that we are not able mm. to get uh, funding from multilateral institutions. Mm. And what also happens is that mm. these multilateral institutions mm. are used as benchmark organizations mm. by the rest of the, the international financial sector. Yes. So when we do get the limited funding, it's at a premium. Mm. Um, and this militates against economic development mm. uh, in Zimbabwe. It leads to a situation where we have foreign currency shortages mm. and this has resulted uh, in the demise of our local currency. Mm. Mm. Uh, we've been under sanctions for about 20 years now. Yes. Uh, I would say the climax was in 2008 mm. when our, our currency actually collapsed. Mm. So you would say 2008 is solely based the, the events that led up to 2008 is solely based on what we are experiencing still with sanctions. Yes, okay. and this is why I was giving the background mm. of what leads to shortages of foreign currency. Yes. And what leads to currency collapse. Mm. And we witnessed it in mm. 2008. Mm. And people lost pensions. Mm. People lost savings. Mm. We went to ground zero. Mm. And this is how the, the common person is affected absolutely and we have been clawing our way back now mm. now we are even talking about vision 2030 yes uh, trying to develop our economy mm. towards 2030 and yes mm. we are moving towards that mm. but the pace that we are able to do it mm. at mm. is limited okay because of the sanctions the sanctions are like an albatross mm. on our thoughts Mm. as a nation mm. and they limit our economic activity absolutely and yeah speaking to um what um i earlier asked on uh, i did hear you mention a few of the things like pensions as well as savings that affects the everyday zimbabwe now can you also say uh, perhaps i'll move on uh with the question to you mr martin jarari can you also um say that you know sectors like the health sector uh, sectors like education are um obviously not growing at the pace and speed that they're supposed to simply because of these economic sanctions or would you blame that on perhaps factors like leadership uh, what's your what's your take on that yeah uh, thank you thank you Ketley. Mm. um firstly let me thank the people of zimbabwe mm. who came to support us the citizens against mm. economic sanctions absolutely on the 25th of october absolutely and i'm sure these issues relate to your particular yes, constituents yes which is the citizens as yes a whole. the absolutely. citizens yes, yes we yes. besieged the american embassy oh yes we we were there in thousands and thousands mm. and the most important thing was it was the youth mm. you know who have been affected so much by the sanctions and the youth they came in their numbers mm. and the Americans, they saw that the people of Zimbabwe are saying enough is enough. Mm. You know, these sanctions must be removed. But mm. uh, coming back to your question, mm. um, you see, if you look at the health sector, mm. it has been so much affected by mm. the effects of sanctions. Why? Because uh, our, our, our councils, our ministries, like mm. the Minister of Health and or whoever is mm. buying these uh, like drugs, equipment for the hospitals and Absolutely. everything, they cannot access the funding, as Mr. Chikora was saying mm. and as Mr. Uh, Mabanga was saying, mm. because the sanctions are really tightening on the economic part mm. of it. You mm. know, we can't borrow; they can't borrow. Mm. If you go to the educational sector as well, as they were alluding, um, you see that we need to borrow money from the World Bank, you know, the IMF and all other financial So the World Bank is directly looking at some of the issues we're facing in Zimbabwe with regards to sanctions yes. and saying there's limitations in which they can assist us. Actually, because if you go to the Zidera Act, you know, mm. in the Zidera Act, that's mm. where you find uh, where they are saying no financial institution must give credit or to cancel balance of payments or mm. anything mm. To, to the government of Zimbabwe, not to an wow. individual, to the government of, of Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe because of these sanctions. So our government cannot borrow money. Mm. Our government can have, cannot have access to any credit mm. because of the Zidera Act. You have spoken just like an agent as well as proponent of uh, fighting sanctions. Yeah. And still with that conversation, we'll be right back here on Economics 101.
Hello and uh, welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us here on ZBC TV. My name is uh, Kurt Lee Gwyn. Today we are on the background that October was uh, set aside by the Southern, Southern African uh, Development uh, Community, which is a SADC calling for the unconditional lifting of illegal sanctions imposed on the Republic of Zimbabwe. Now in studio, uh, we are joined by Mr. Trustchikora, who is uh, the Economic Committee Chairman within uh, the Poland uh, structure. Mr. Mr. Martin Gerare, who is the director of the Citizens uh, Against Economic Sanctions, and uh, last but not least, um, Dr. Langton Mabanga, who is an economic analyst. And uh, Mr. Gerare, as you were speaking to me earlier, um, I have a follow-up question, uh, which says that uh, you call yourselves the Citizens Against the Economic uh, Sanctions. What is your mandate to the people of Zimbabwe? And um, people often say, you know, we're just there to make a quick buck. We've had a structure. Perhaps it's going to be endorsed and defunded. How best can you say you're making an impact and fighting this stigma? We are the people. We mm -hmm. are the, the, the citizens of Zimbabwe who are saying we have been so much affected by mm -hmm. these um, these sanctions, mm. these illegal sanctions. Mm. And we have seen that, mm. you know, the people of Zimbabwe don't really understand this subject of sanctions. Mm. And our organization was formed by mm. the ordinary citizens of this country who mm. said it is now time that we go to the people mm. and we educate the people. We, mm. we, we run awareness campaigns mm. to make sure that everybody who is even kuma kona kwa wari wana Zimbabwe, mm. vanya sunz visa uti ma sanction aka mira se. Mm. Vanya sunz visa kuti effect ze ma sanction mm. iliku tirova papi. Because we are the people who are suffering. Mm. And I'll tell you something, Leslie, mm. uh, I mean, Ketley, mm. that, um, you know, the people of Zimbabwe have been told mm. that these sanctions are targeted. Yes. But seriously speaking, there's nothing called tax decisions. Absolutely. And these, I, I was yeah. going to ask Dr. Yeah. Mabanga that question. Yeah. You know, we have lists of people uh, that we see uh, on social media or whether it's a publicly released press release. Uh, Dr. Mabanga, as an economic analyst, do you think that, uh, you know, the, the, the names on this list are usually names of people who are economically well to do? in Zimbabwe, if I'm not mistaken. You would only think and say that if mm. you want to eat off uh, the, the propaganda of the authors of, okay. uh, of the very sanctions. Yes. It, it is... So it's propaganda, you it, say? It is yes. propaganda. <laughs> okay. it, is, it is naked mm. uh, propaganda. Mm. It is fact mm. that these sanctions mm. um, yet the parastatals of yes. this country, yes. mind you, parastatals by their nature, mm. are strategic. Mm. Uh, the entities mm. uh, of, of an economy, mm. of a nation, mm. of a people. Mm. Um, like I said to you, that the design was to eclipse the, mm. the, 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 the economy. Mm. And let's go up and say, why the economy? It is because they wanted to afflict and inflict citizenry. Absolutely. So, Dr. Mabba, what you're doing here is confirming that these people we see on the list are the people with the keys to the economy? No, 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 no. I'm, okay. I'm saying that the sanctions mm. the, were directed towards the strategic entities okay. of this country. Okay. The issue of individuals is propaganda. Okay. And I will say it again and again. It's and propaganda. Again. You and cleared I, I that. And I will go and prove right. it to you. And um, I don't know how you, how you would def how, how you define that as targeted mm. uh, to individuals when when we had banks, Zimbabwean banks, mm. listed under sanctions. Mm. We had um, the parastatals of mm. Zimbabwe listed under sanctions. Things that drive our economy. Of course, essentially. Yes. Yeah. Every, every government, mm. uh, including the authors of the of the Americans, they mm. do have their own mm. their their own um, you know parastatals. Mm. Mm. Uh, you 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 really want to understand mm. that these sanctions? Mm. It's 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 incredible when we now look at this as the Americans' mm. uh, project mm. alone. Mm. There were Zimbabweans. Okay who were co-authors of the sanctions. Okay. If anything, they instigated, yeah. they called, they invited 
for sanctions. They, okay. And it is the magnitude of our, mm. Mm. Of, of the liberation, the, 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 the freedoms that we have mm. in the country. Mm. I don't know where else you'd mm. go, call for, call for sanctions, mm. you know, against your own. Mm. That will paralyze an economy. That mm. will paralyze your financial system. Mm. That will paralyze, you know, food production, mm. supply for your own people. Mm. Only because government demanded, the people of Zimbabwe rather mm. demanded mm. a fundamental economic asset, okay. which is land. Absolutely. Thank you for that point, Dr. Mabanga. I'm going to have to cut you off there as we are going to continue this exciting conversation. You're giving a little bit of context. Perhaps before we take our short break, um, uh, Mr. Trust Chikora, from the Political Actors Dialogue uh, point of view, um, we would like to perhaps understand a little bit about uh, these political uh, these political parties with their contribution um, to how these sanctions and how they view uh, the, the general viewpoint of sanctions. Yes, uh, it's important that you want to put into context Poland mm. Mm. in terms of the political parties. As you are aware, it's mm. political parties that contested the presidential elections mm. in 2018 coming together mm. and saying, how can we work together to mm. improve our country? Uh, mm. to, to develop our country. Mm. And so we recognize, mm. all of us mm. who are in Poland, mm. that sanctions are a big uh, factor mm. that is militating against the development of this country. We take a short break and we'll be back to wind up this exciting uh, conversation. You can see it's getting very, very in-depth here in studio. You don't want to go away. It is uh, still a pleasant evening and you're with us here on a ZBC at TV. My name is a Kurt Lee Agwindi. This is Economics 101, a platform that we get to get into topical matters surrounding the Zimbabwean economy. And perhaps I will just continue uh, with you as we were having a conversation earlier. Mr. Trust Chikora of uh, the Polad Economic Committee. You um, were speaking at length about uh, some of these um, sanctions being... Uh, <laughs> retrogressive to the uh, development of the Zimbabwean economy. But we now perhaps want to get into some of the things that are done in terms of the awareness, uh, which is uh, some of the anti-sanctions campaigns that we saw this year. What is your view on them? And do you think that they were effective in terms of getting the message out? Yes, we, we need to continue pushing. Mm. Uh, you may be aware that uh, it was in 2019 mm. when even Sadak mm. decided to set aside a day mm. uh, to deal with sanctions in Zimbabwe, mm. the 25th of October. Mm. And uh, as far back as 2019, which uh, coincidentally is the year that Poland was formed, mm. we also participated uh, at the inaugural anti-sanctions demo, mm. uh, which was held at the National Sports Stadium. Mm. And I personally gave a speech mm. on behalf of Poland mm. uh, about sanctions mm. and uh, actually fighting against sanctions. Mm. And we are happy that this has continued every year mm. Since 2019, mm. uh, Sadak coming together with us in solidarity, mm. and Zimbabweans on mm. their own mm. coming together in solidarity and pushing against sanctions. As just mm. last week, we were together uh, with the citizens against economic sanctions okay. and other. Oh, so uh, there is a background to this collaboration yes, and against other, sanctions. Other it's one big voice? Yes, we yes. were there at the yeah. American embassy mm. uh, demonstrating against mm. uh, sanctions. Diplomatic pressure is being put. Other mm. heads of state in Africa, in SADC, are talking about sanctions. How it's not just affecting Zimbabwe alone, but affecting the whole region. Mm. And everybody is saying, enough is enough. Mm. We've had this for 20 years. Mm. It's not helping anybody. Mm. It's now 
time for sanctions to go. Sanctions yeah. must go. Absolutely. Sanctions must go. I think that's the word that's resonating with all of us. And uh, perhaps um, if we look at uh, some of these organizations that are being uh, formed with relation to the noise that is being made against these sanctions, where can you say um, the funding is supposed to come from for these kind of things to happen? Perhaps, Mr. Jarana, you can give us a greater context. Uh, you've got the CAES, yes. and um, we want to know perhaps uh, where does the funding come from? We start there, and then we know its roots and why there's so much vigor and energy against sanctions. We are from people from different political parties, mm. different churches and organizations, mm. but our voice is the sanctions must go. But mm. you asked me about the funding. I think it is the government of Zimbabwe should mm. fund for the for the uh, for the activities that organizations like mm. ourselves are doing because you know where else can we get the funding? Can Absolutely. the Americans come and fund us to 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 fight them? No. No. You see, mm. so the big brother who should be doing this job is the government of Zimbabwe mm. should set up a fund that should be mm. used especially to mm. fight sanctions here in Zimbabwe. Mm. You know because. We need to travel to all corners of this country, you know, educating the people and telling people the effects of these sanctions. Yes. And without the government's help, we will sit in our houses because we can't fund ourselves. Absolutely. Yes. And also, we are very happy with Pollard. You know, um, they had our call when we just lifted the phone. We said, Pollard, we need you because you are the opposition parties. Mm. You see, yeah. if the voice of Pollard is coming and say sanction mm. must be removed. Mm. I think there are more than a hundred Pollard members in Pollard. Absolutely. And when Pollard says sanctions must be removed and you find Pollard mm. is moving with us, I think there will be just one opposition political party say that is saying sanctions must stay and we feel very sorry for that. <laughs> Absolutely. But Zimbabweans are saying yeah. sanctions must be removed. Thank Absolutely. you, Pollard. And, uh, and, and Dr. Mabanga, yes. perhaps these two gentlemen have a background. They were, with, they were together uh, when they were marching against sanctions. But I want to ask you, uh, Dr. Uh, Mabanga, the background of one's political party, does it have an effect or do you have to have a certain political alignment for you to be able to speak against sanctions in Zimbabwe? Um, uh, firstly, mm. I, I also want you to know that I, mm. I, I have been protesting against sanctions mm. in, in my own way. Mm. Uh, I'm an academic, I'm, mm. a, I'm a business person. Absolutely. I have, I have several ways that I've, mm. uh, corridors that we have used to protest mm. against mm. sanctions. Um, you may want to know that um, a, there is one thing that mm. is undeniable. Mm. The issue that we, as Zimbabweans, we belong to Zimbabwe. Yes. Um, I'm sure, and thank, thank God for the um, mm. diplomacy genius of uh, mm. the president, mm. Dr. Idim Nangagwa, mm. who escalated this to Sadak. Now, now that you want to know it is gone beyond SADAC. Mm. It is now in a, an AU agenda, mm. e, and we hope that it it will it will become a transcontinental mm. agenda. Mm. E, this is no space for uh, partisanship. Mm. There is no space for 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 uh, partisan politics mm. in this. The, the 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 economy that has been uh, that has been um, mm. battered is the Zimbabwean economy. It's, it's the Zimbabwean infrastructure, it's the Zimbabwean people, it's the Zimbabwean education, mm. Zimbabwean health. Mm. Uh, it is unfortunate that some politicians seek mm. political experience mm. over what mm. sanctions have caused. Okay. And like I said, that has been the design mm. of this sanction. Absolutely. So I think there's no space for partisanship mm. in, in, in this. Mm. It's there should be national interest, mm. there should be convergence, mm. there should be confluence mm. of um, 
of solidarity mm. in this space. And mm. together, we ought to fight sanctions. Absolutely. Together, we ought to fight uh, sanctions. That was Dr. Langton Mabanga, economic analyst. In studio, we have also been joined by uh, Mr. Trusta Chikora, as well as uh, Mr. Martin uh, Jarare of um, the Citizens Against Economic uh, Sanctions. It has been an exciting conversation to do with what has been happening with regards uh, to the month of October, which uh, we are calling for the removal of these illegal sanctions on uh, Zimbabwe. Here on ZBC TV, you have heard the voice of these three gentlemen who have come through. And from me, Kurt Lee Gwindi, it is a very good evening from Economics 101 and the crew behind the scenes. God bless Zimbabwe.